Well, hello and welcome. Welcome, welcome to the starting over session with with Coach Roz. And it is I, Allison Rozelle, also known as Coach Roz. And today we are talking about spiritual detox. Yes, spiritual detox. <sighs> this is something that um, is really near and dear to me right now. Um, it's something that I had been really giving a lot of thought to. Um, and there have just been different things, especially with the energy that's going on now. Hello, Tabitha. Greetings to you, my love. Um, and all this stuff with with retrogrades and solar eclipse and partial eclipse and new moon and now full moon. And it's so much going on energetically right now that we all just need to just <sighs> take a breath. But there's just been some things that I've been personally um, dealing with. And so doing what I always do, um, I was like, okay, well, I kind of feel like I need a spiritual detox right now. So I Googled spiritual detox. And of course, one of my favorite um, pages, blogs to visit uh, regarding um, like, spiritual things like chakras and um, spiritual detox and things like that is mindbodygreen.com. And so they list the signs of you needing to do a spiritual detox. But before we go into that, I want to pull a card to get us started. And then, um, excuse me, we'll close out with a card as well. So we're going to start our session with one manifesting. We are one manifesting. <laughs> Not with that face, though. We're going to do it with joy and everything else. So let's just come together as we are sitting here, wherever you are. Um, I want you to find your, just like put your hand on your heart space, your heart chakra space. And let's just breathe a little bit here. Take a deep breath in. And exhale out. Take a deep breath in. Exhale out. One more, take a deep breath in. And out. Yes. Okay. Now, that always makes me feel better. I don't know about you. So, um, Tab, Tabitha, please give me a number between 1 and 12, please. And we will pull from the One Manifesting deck and we will get our session started and we will talk about spiritual detoxing. Between 1 and 12, love. Ten. Ooh, thank you for giving me that number. That number had some significance to me last month. Ten was everywhere. Ten was just like ten, ten. No, not last month. Well, yeah, it was last month where ten was just everywhere. So, we will pull ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <clears throat> eight. Nine and ten. And I love this. I was actually going to split the deck until I looked down and I'm like, oh no. No, we won't do it. Because it was upside down. And upside, upside down cards mean pay special attention to this. So, um, 
Nuakia, goddess Nuakia, and I'm pretty sure I'm butchering her name. But this is about abundance. Yes, I love pulling this card. It is a nurturing card, and I always have more than enough. Wealth is my birthright. I always have more than enough. Wealth is my birthright. Love pulling this card. Love it. So that is a great way to start our session. Let me move my light here. There we go. Better. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about spiritual detox. First of all, do you know the signs of when you need to do a spiritual detox or just a detox for yourself? So let's talk about it. So according to um, mindbodygreen.com, uh, here's some of the signs, okay? So the first thing is, you find yourself being drawn to negativity and drama on social media. Yeah. So it's kind of like when you get, you know, most of us look at social media on our phone. I think I and maybe a few others actually look at it on the computer a lot of times. But, you know, if I'm on the go, I'm looking at it on my phone. So when you're on your phone and you're scrolling and you're scrolling and all of a sudden you see this drama go across and you think ooh juicy and you go in and you start looking at the drama and then you scroll again and you see some more drama and you kind of start welcoming that in to you to where you're seeking it you want it um it's 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 giving you some kind of i don't know I don't even think it's like a high, but it's it's kind of feeding something within you um, because you may already be in a negative space. And so you're looking for more reasons to stay in that negative space and to stay in that you start reading all this negative stuff. So if you find yourself drawn to negativity on like social media you're watching a whole lot of like negative news and all that kind of stuff now. Watching the news is important, but with all the drama that's going on these days, it's kind of like, what else? <laughs> so you don't have to be that tuned in all the time. Cut it off, you know, save your energy on that. But if you find yourself being more attracted to it where you can't seem to shut it off, you may be ready for a detox. The next thing is you find yourself speaking negatively or you're overly sarcastic. Now, let me just say this. I am <laughs> like the queen of sarcasm. I'm very sarcastic when I want to be. Um, when I'm in like somebody done flip the bitch switch on me, I can be very sarcastic. Um, and I, I, I do work on myself. So I'm not overly sarcastic, um, but it's something that is just, is in me. But I, I purposefully choose, choose to not participate in being so sarcastic. Um, and I definitely try not to participate in negative speak, but it can be very seductive. Like if you're going through something, um, it's, it's hard to find that, that medium where, you know, you're already speaking about something that's negative going on in your life that you may be feeling, that you may be dealing with or whatever. But then, you know, when you find somebody that helps you feed that and you just spin out of control to where you're speaking negatively or you're spending time around someone and their negativity kind of latches on to you to where they're doing negative speak and you're doing negative speak and it's just all around. So if you find that, that could be another sign. The next sign is you feel numb, emotionally numb or heart sick. You feel emotionally numb or heart sick. Like you... Um, if you lost a loved one, um, if you have gone through like a bad breakup, uh, you know, things that are just, you know, 
parts of the heart, dealing with, with matters of the heart. Um, and you just are at a point because it's easy when you've been hurt by someone, when it's family that's hurt you, friends that have hurt you, relationship person have hurt you. You know, it's easy to become numb. Like if you've been hurt by like all three, then yeah, you're numb. And you're like, I don't feel anything right now. So, you know, whoever want to catch it from me, they can catch it because right now I have no feelings. I'm like, whatever at this point. That's a sign that you may need to do a serious spiritual detox. And it also could be a sign as well. You may need to seek some help, some counseling to help you kind of to guide you through those waters and help you find ways to um, to cope, to cope. Because it's easy to go from numb to the lower level of that. And then, you know, yeah. If so if you find yourself with that, seek some help. It may not be that bad, but I don't want anyone to take that chance. So the next thing is happy people piss you off. And I say that with a grin because <laughs> I, I always hear people say, I'm not a morning person. And when someone is all perky and happy early in the morning, it pisses me off. It's like, go on somewhere. I haven't had my coffee yet. And you're just really, 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 really on 10 already. I get it. How be ever. That's not their problem. That's yours. <laughs> or... If you're, again, let's go back to social media. If you're scrolling through social media, like I've been seeing a lot of anniversaries and people welcoming babies, whether they are their babies or grandbabies. Um, so I've been seeing a lot of that. Uh, of course, um, we're in like wedding season. So, you know, people's cousins and aunts and, you know, whatnots, everybody is getting married or whatever. For me, I'm happy for you. But for some, they may not be. Like, you're probably looking like, yeah, 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 you and your vacation. Who cares? You know, nobody gives a rat's ass about y'all being happy. Meanwhile, I'm sitting over here on my couch eating uh, Godiva chocolate and drinking a Coke Zero and watching reruns of Housewives while you off on your vacation. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Happy people, being happy for other people may come a little hard for you when you are in the midst of dealing with something within yourself and that you need a spiritual detox. So that could be another element of you needing one. Happy people piss you off. The next one, you don't sleep well or you're having a lot of bad dreams lately. What I try to tell people is it's a good idea to journal your dreams. If you can remember them, sometimes it's, it's hard to remember your dreams. I get it because sometimes, you know, with some dreams, I'm like, yeah, I dreamed about this particular topic, but I don't remember the ins and outs of it. But when you wake up from that dream, it's good to go ahead and write it out if you can remember it. Um, but if you find that you've been having a lot of bad dreams lately um, or you're just not sleeping well or may it's you're not sleeping soundly. You're not comfortable when you sleep. You're tossing and turning and everything else. That could be your uh spiritual detox wake up call as well. The next thing is you are in victim mode. Yeah. Where everybody's picking on me. Nobody nobody cares about me. You know, oh, my life just sucks so bad. And, you know, everything is just like me, 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 me. Oh, my God, the horror. Uh, I'm in full Scarlet O'Hara. Like, oh, my gosh, everything is just so bad kind of stuff. 
victim. If you drift into victimhood, then that might be an indication that you need to do a spiritual detox. If you're starting to feel like everybody's ganging up on you, um, everything is taken personally for you, you take everything personally, somebody gives you constructive criticism, and you about ready to knuck if you book, you know, kind of attitude, you know, if you fall into that, it may be time for a spiritual detox. The next thing, if you shy away from prayer and meditation or anything spiritual, so if you find that um, you're not praying as much as you used to, or meditating as much as you used to, or both, or any other spiritual practices, you know, whether it's you reading your your Bible or your Quran, or you've um, you're not going to church or to temple or mass or surrounding yourself with people with like beliefs. Um, you're not doing your, your meditation or yoga or the things that you did before, excuse me, that make you happy. Um, that could be an indication that, um, that you are needing a spiritual detox. Can you hear me and see me okay? Because I just got a message from someone saying that they could not hear or see me. So if you're here and you can hear or see me, let me know. Give me a thumbs up or something. Tabitha, are you still with me? Okay, good. She says she can see and hear me fine. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so it could be just technical difficulties for that person. So at any rate, um, yeah. So if you stepped away from your usual spiritual practices and you can't seem to find yourself you know, back in the flow to do those things that are important to you, um, thanks, Tab. I got you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you started to shy away from that, that's a sign you need a spiritual detox as well. The next one, and I think we're, we not I think, we're nearing the end of this list. So that way we can get to the good stuff of how to remedy this. Okay, the next one. You are bored all of the time. You are bored all of the time. Not just like for a little while, but like if you're continuously bored, you need a spiritual detox. And the reason why that is, what do I always say? Your life is supposed to turn you on. And if it's not, then we need to check that and we need to fix that. <laughs> So if you're bored all of the time, you need a spiritual detox because it is a spiritual thing. It is something that um, you are clearly battling spiritually um, because when it starts mentally and going into spiritually, it manifests into physical, into the physical realm. So yes, if you're bored all the time, that could be an indication that you do need a spiritual detox. Um, and we'll get to this in just a second. Last but not least, you can't remember the last time you've taken a walk, been out in nature, watched the sun rise or the sun set. <laughs> you can't remember the last time you've connected with Mother Earth that you've enjoyed being in the great outdoors. You can't think of that. It's like as soon as you are finished with your day, you get out of your car and you run into your house and you shut the door and that's it. I don't want to do nothing else. I just want to sit in my house. And then we got those, those chocolates and Coke Zero and Housewives again. Now granted, 
there's only one of those things that I've enjoyed, <laughs> and that's the chocolate. <laughs> I don't drink Coke Zeros anymore, uh, and I don't really get into the housewives. No shade. Anybody that does, that's on you, but it's just not my cup of tea. So, with that being said, let's talk about what you can do as part of your spiritual detox. So, the first things first, turn off social media. Turn it off. Better yet, turn the notifications off. Turn the notifications off to where it's not making your phone beep, beep, beep all the time that you're getting notified for something that you probably didn't post. Somebody's posting something, you know, off the wall and crazy. And it's kind of like, how many times can you sit and look at this one person sit and bitch and moan about their single life or whatever? So turn the notifications off. Turn them off. Give yourself some time during the day to totally come down and detox. Meaning, before you go to bed, that's the prime time to do it. Put your phone on Do Not Disturb. And do not let any of those notifications come through. Don't touch your phone. Don't pick it up. Don't do any of that. Give your mind, your body, your spirit that cleanse from the stuff that comes from social media. Social media, news, um, <laughs> surfing the internet at, at, for anything at this point in time. Turn that stuff off. Turn it off. My Teddy Pendergrass voice, turn it off. <laughs> turn it off. Number two, get outside in nature. Yes, take a walk in your neighborhood, in the park. Find a trail uh, and just let the sun touch your body. If you can go to the beach, if you live near a beach or you have vacation time coming up soon, hit the beach. Yeah, let the waves hit and just smell that salt water air and just yeah soak up the sun like what's that what is who made that song was it Cheryl Crow I think it was Cheryl Crow and I love that song by the way but yeah get out in nature like where I live in ATU shouty we have so many parks in like all over and there's so many parks that have these these glorious nature trails that you can take um I mean they're they're perfectly like mapped out and like yeah now not too many of them have that much light during the nighttime so you want to walk during the day but I mean this one particular tra trail that I used to walk all the time um and I had been saying I want to start walking it again I see uh, I used to see deer you know I would see snakes oh, I hate snakes but I would see them and as long as they left me alone, I left them alone. <laughs> and there was a nice, like, creek that went through and all this kind of stuff. So get yourself out into nature. That is a great way to detox. Just just reconnect with Mother Nature. And it's, it's a great way to get your detox on. The next thing you can do is cleanse or clear your space, your home. Um even your desk at work. Clear that space. Declutter it. Declutter. Take out trash. Um, those bags of clothes that you've been saying that you're going to donate to charity, whether it be Salvation Army Goodwill or whomever that you've been sitting there looking at those bags of clothes and purses and everything else from the beginning of the year when I told you to do that and that bag been sitting there looking at you like, hello, I'm still here. Go on and donate that stuff and get it out of your house, please. <laughs> get that stuff out your house. Get you some, get, do some like really deep cleaning in your house. Like get your back into it and your elbows and stuff. Get in your house and give it a good once over with a really good cleaning and decluttering and cleansing and dusting and everything else that needs to be done, get in there and do it. Then once that's done, light some candles or some incense 
or have one of those oil diffusers and get some good smells in your home. Because I don't know about you, I love good smells. I love when my home smells good because when it's clean and it smells good, I feel good and it feels good to be in my house. I like that. I don't know about you, but that feels good to me. That raises my vibration like way up there when I have that. So that is a good way to clear the negative energy, to detox yourself because just because you're cleansing and, and, and cleaning your home and clearing your home, it doesn't mean that that doesn't affect you mentally and spiritually because it does. And a lot of times clutter is the manifestation of things going on within you because if you if it weren't like that, then most likely your house would be decluttered. But you've got stuff going on within you. So start working on that. All right? The next thing that you can do for spiritual detox. Tap back into your spirituality. Tap back into it. You know, whether it's going to church, going to temple or mass, um, getting back on track with your prayer um prayer life your prayer meditation you can start journaling again for your gratitude um you can you know whatever your spiritual practices are start doing it again recharge and get back into that and that way you can slowly start to detox and slowly start to get yourself back into your groove back into your flow and then things start to come together and feel better, right? The next thing, a physical detox. Yes. Juicing, teas, smoothies, fasting. Clean your temple of the toxin, toxins that are keeping you stuck in your moods or that mode of any of the things in that list. Yeah, if you do a physical detox, that also can help you in your spiritual detox because, you know, your temple is where your higher self and God come together. So you got to make sure that your trinity of you, you, and God can come together in your temple. So you want to do a physical detox. You want to make sure that you are cleansing yourself. You know, you can do um, herbs, I've heard. I've not tried any herbs, but like, um, oh, it's a company because I see them on my timeline. Um, D Herbs. Like, they have, like, this line, and I think I checked them out. They have, like, a line of, like, vitamins and supplements and um, shakes and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not doing a commercial for them. I'm not plugging them. I'm just using them as an example. Um, you can do stuff like that to kind of detox your body and get yourself back on track. The next thing you can do, move your body. Move, move your body. Hey. <laughs> Move your body, dance, exercise, do some yoga, go for a walk, go for a jog, running. Movement creates happy hormones and, and endorphins in your body. So as you move and your adrenaline gets pumping and you start moving and everything else, have you not noticed that when you do finally get your body moving and doing things, you feel good? Like this morning, I took me a beautiful walk outside before it got too hot. And when I came back in the house after I showered and had my, you know, breakfast shake and everything else, I felt great. I was like, wow, okay, this is good. Let's keep it going. And so, yeah, that was awesome. So just make sure you get your body moving. Do some things to get your body moving. The next thing you can do, surround yourself with positivity. Surround yourself with positivity. Listen to positive music, positive people. Um, watch positive movies, feel good movies, comedies, something. Uh, same thing with television. Stop looking at so much news. 
we already know the world's a mess. We don't need the details every single day. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't mind being, you know, knowing things, but it's just too much of it just brings me down. So I'm like, you know what? I can only take so much. That's it. <laughs> so limit that and just change it around and do that. Start surrounding yourself with some positivity. You know, um, a friend of mine, I love going in her house because um, the first time I went into her bathroom, she had all these little, like I have these post-it notes. She has all these post-it notes, with, like affirmations all in her bathroom. And I thought that was like really, really cool that she did that because, you know, if you have to do stuff like that and put that around, because, I mean, I have things that are around me um, to just kind of raise your vibration and that you're looking at every day, do it. Surround yourself with, with that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? To kind of make you feel better so that when you wake up in the morning and you look at your wall, you're like, yes. I always have more than enough and wealth is my birthright. You know, any of those kind of affirmations that you can think of, okay? Last but not least, cleanse your energy. Cleanse your energy. Do this by like taking a salt bath. Um, sea salt is very cleansing. You can do sea salt. Um... You can do a sound bath, which is basically sound healing, sound therapy. Like when I use my beautiful singing bowl, and I'm going to learn to make it sing. But for now, I love that sound. <laughs> I love, love, love that sound. So you can use that. Um, or bells or drums. Um, you can do some sage, some smudging with sage or Palo Santo. Um, sage is good for clearing the space. Palo Santo is good for raising your vibration and making you feel a little more happy and alive and everything else. So, what in this list are you going to try? You might try some of them. You may try all of them. But, I mean, I would say pick something to kind of get yourself on the road to a spiritual detox. Because we can all use it. Like I said, right now, the energy of the universe is so incredibly charged with so much going on. And then you may already have your own personal things that you're dealing with. So, why not? You know, why not? You deserve that. You're worthy of that right right so we're gonna let the sacred traveler take us on out of here and i'm gonna pick the card now <clears throat> these cards i love them <laughs> i love them for superficial reasons because of the purple the purple just makes me so happy when i look at it um but the deck is awesome. I love the deck. So we are going to pull. That was kind of a wimpy shuffle. But I did have a jumping card though. I'll show you the one I pulled and the one that jumped. And this one also was upside down. <laughs> Finding sanctuary. Finding sanctuary. Opening your spiritual source. Finding sanctuary. I think that's very appropriate when talking about spiritual detox because your temple and then your home, this is all supposed to be sanctuary. It's supposed to be a place of peace, 
of joy, of bliss, of happiness, of, you know, orgasmic creativity and abundance. It is the dwelling place of of creator, of God within our temples, within our home space, right? So, yes, finding your sanctuary in above the clouds, above everything else. Find that place, that sacred place where you can go and be you and feel covered and feel safe and feel loved and feel energized and feel peaceful and feel calm and all that negative stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to come up in here. It's not welcome up in here, right? So finding sanctuary. That's a beautiful card. Beautiful. Oh, I feel that. I feel that. So let's see what card jumped out. And I think Tabitha did this. Miracles. <laughs> I think Tabitha did this, but that is okay. Expect the wondrous to emerge. Expect the wondrous to emerge. And why not? When you go through a spiritual de detox, when you get your, your house in order, if you will, your house and your house, when you get those things into alignment and you get them in order, then miracles are easier to spot. You don't have all the chaos going on all around you. You don't have the drama and the negativity and, and all those things to bring about just, ugh, just, ugh, kind of energy. No. When I find my sanctuary and I cleanse myself and I detox myself spiritually, miracles are easier to spot. Miracles are easier to manifest. Yes. So I can expect the wondrous to emerge when I'm clear, when I'm aligned, when I am in in the right place at the right time, in the right frame of mind, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Yes. So this is a blessed reading to let us know if you're going through a lot, just know right now you have everything you need. You are abundant. You have more than enough. You always have more than enough. Why? You're a child of the Most High God. You always have more than enough. And wealth is your birthright. But find sanctuary in this spiritual detox. Clear your space. Clear your life. And find your miracle. Manifest your miracles. Right? Right. Yes. So let's take a deep breath in. And exhale out. Mm. Thank you so much for joining me. Share this with other people. Please and thank you. <laughs> and if you need or want any more information about me, you can always go to culturize.com. You can get your free gift there. You can book a coaching session with me. You can book a Reiki session with me. You can pull your you can <laughs> book your own card reading with me. I got you. I got you. So thank you again for joining me. I love you. Have a wonderful wonderful evening. Bye for now.